So with uh, spiritual gifts in general, do you consider the gifts named in scripture to be a closed list? Mm, or is it possible that other specific gifts of the spirit could be added? That's good. Good question. I think, I think what's important about well, that question and therefore about the gift lists that we have in scripture, you know, we have significant lists um, in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, uh, kind of the fivefold gifts in Ephesians 4, and then a couple in, in Peter. Uh, when you put that all together, or when you look at them separately, kind of put them in parallel columns, what you notice is not one of the gift lists in these four different places are the same. Uh, and when you start matching them, you see that you know, some lists have double gifts, but none of the lists are exactly the same at all. And so uh, I'm with Gordon Fee on this, who was a leading Pentecostal scholar, did a amazing commentary on, on the, this question of the Holy Spirit. He argues that what we seem to have in the gift list in the New Testament is uh, an ad hoc list every time. In other words, when someone's going to talk about some gifts, they'll write some of the gifts down, but they're not trying to do a, an exhaustive list of these things. So we shouldn't treat either any one of them or even the sum total of them as being the total number of gifts that God's ever given to his people. Uh, and I, I think that that's wise. I think that uh, I see things that God's done and gifts he's given to people that just aren't in those lists. And yet it's hard to deny that God's given that gift to these people. And so I don't think that they were meant to be this litmus test of the, the total. Because what happens then is we, I don't know if you've ever done a gift testing. If you ever get gift testing, often the only gifts they test for are the sum total of those lists also to boil down to, which, which certainly isn't bad, but I think it can miss a number of ways God gifts people in our culture today. So I spoke with a lady two weeks ago who, after the service, asked me this kind of question. Uh, she said that she frequently uh, has dreams that she feels led to share with people, and it often has a meaning. Uh, it sets a direction to their life, or it sets them up to expect something or whatever. Um, and she says, you know, is that a gift of the Spirit? And I, if, if good fruit's coming out of it, um, I'd have to say yes. And, you know, Joseph seemed to have that. And, and, and so it would make sense if the Spirit was doing it back then. Maybe it could be happening here. And, even uh, though dream isn't listed in one yeah, of the Even gifts. though it's not listed in 1 yeah. Corinthians 12. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's, in, it's in Scripture. So yeah. There again, my idea is like, I, I, if there's no clear precedent for it, I'm not going to go an automatic yes, but I'm also not going to do an automatic no. You ask the question, well, what's the fruit of it? Like, mm -hmm. Does it have the kind of flavor that the gifts of the Spirit are supposed to have.